hi children and yours in this video i am going to explain one problem related to the motion in a straight line chapter this problem was asked so many times in examination that's why this is a very very important problem that's why you have to watch very carefully and observe the given answer and what it is the question first you have to observe and after that you while you are watching the video without skip you must watch the video children so children this is a very important problem i think this is the seventh short answer question in your textbook according to silvers so that's why how to watch it the problem is waiting on the board for us okay children let us see the problem a ball is dropped from the roof of a tall building and simultaneously another ball is thrown horizontally with some velocity from the same roof which ball lands first explain your answer children that is the situation a ball is dropped from the roof of a tall building and simultaneously another ball is thrown horizontally with same velocity or with some velocity from the same roof which ball lands first explain your answer so children here one first you have to understand the concept what it is there children what is the first thing there is one tall building it is there clear this is the tall building so from the earth we are taken the height of the building is here h clear h is the height of the top building h is the height of the tall building and children what you are saying a ball is dropped from the roof of a tall building a ball is dropped first ball is dropped this is the first ball a ball is dropped from the roof of a building so like this simultaneously another ball is thrown horizontally so this is the first one is dropped and second one is thrown like this clear so thrown horizontally clear children so for example first one is what it is dropped dropped vertically downwards and next one is what throwing the like this horizontally the angle of inclination is zero don't like this simply we are throwing like this so one should be dropped one ball should be dropped vertically downwards and one ball is projected horizontally got children so this is the situation given for us so here in these two balls which one can reach the ground first first one or second one or both so we have to give clarification that is the children situation one tall building is there from the tall building one ball is dropped vertically downwards and one ball is horizontally projected so it makes some zero angle with the ground so like this clear so then what we have to discuss in this case what how to explain in these two balls which ball can reach the ground first so let's go for that so here children clear this is the first ball and this is the second ball so here we need some space that's why i'm erasing the problem here but i have idea about that one so children for the first ball for the first ball so first ball is nothing but what it is freely falling body freely falling body clear children when freely falling body i clearly explained in explained in previous videos for a freely falling body initial velocity is zero that's why here i am going to write initial velocity is zero u is equals to zero once the body is falling down freely in downwards it is coming in the direction of acceleration due to gravity that's why 
we will take a is equals to plus g plus g and tell me now children it is dropped from the height of building h so that's why the distance traveled by the first body here nothing but what it is height of the building that's why i am taking now s is equals to h clear so now we are taking the equation of motion s is equals to ut plus of at square here t is what time taken by the first body to reach the ground here children now you have to substitute all the values for the first one u is equals to 0 and a is equals to plus g and s is equals to h now we have to substitute that h is equals to u means what 0 into t plus of into g into t square clear children so now from that what right children h is equals to of into g t square h is equals to of into g t square so here from that children we will write 2 h is equals to g t square clear from that what right t square is equals to 2 h by g and t is equals to what right 2 h by g under root of 2 h by g okay children so this is the first of all that's why i'm taking this t is nothing but t1 clear so within this time the first ball will reach the ground clear children so the first ball is dropped from the building so it is considered as a freely falling body for a freely falling body initial velocity is zero and the ball is coming in the direction of acceleration due to sorry gravitational force direction that's why acceleration due to gravity is nothing but acceleration a is equals to plus g and that's why we have substituted all these values then simply what we are getting t1 is equals to root th 2 h by g in this way or in this time the first ball will reach the ground clear children now for second ball so children this is the interesting topic how to remember now the second ball is how it is projected so children generally i am drawing separately here this is the height from that height one ball is projected like this projected like this so after moving some distance that should be coming to the ground like this so clear so here with respect to of x axis this is and this is with respect of y axis clear children will apply the force along the horizontal direction then that means there is no velocity with respect of y axis that's why here again i am going to use same equation for second ball there is no velocity with respect to y axis y axis then that's why i have children here s y is equals to u y t plus of a t square clear that's why here what you do is children s y means nothing but h u y is 0 and t plus of g t square so in this case we will take t is nothing but t2 h is equals to again of g t2 square h is equals to of g2 2 square then from the water children t square is equals to 2 h by g and t2 is equals to under root of 2 h by g got children so that's why here what you have to say t1 is equals to under root of 2 h by g and t2 is equals to under root of 2 h by g that's why children here what you have to say that both objects will reach the ground within the same time because both are acted upon by 
same gravitational force. Got this point, children? Okay, bye. Take care.